Okay. And that's Russell Wilson getting traded to the Denver Broncos. That blew my mind. Yeah, a monster trade out of nowhere. That came that came so quickly. Like I, I mean, I heard the Aaron Rodgers news, and then, like I went and made some food. I sat down. I was kind of away from my computer, and then I got back to my my back to my phone, and there was like fifteen text messages from you guys going back and forth. I'm like, what happened? <laughs> then immediately I, I went and looked. I was like, I couldn't believe it, man. I was it's the just, same boat. Like yeah. I saw the Rodgers news. I was like, oh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go work out for a little bit, and then I saw these texts coming in. And they're like, oh, we got. We should probably change the show now with uh the rogers news this news and the wilson news i'm like wilson news mm -hmm. i'm like what happened to wilson so i go on boom blockbuster trade i'm like whoa what did they give up and obviously they gave up yeah no well, fan goes two first two first two seconds two seconds a fourth no fan and andrew lock with russell wilson <laughs> going to let's start let's with russell wilson himself right uh-huh now, he's going to a situation where, like, wow, he's got some really good receivers here with Jerry Judy and Cortland Sutton. But the, you can also argue that his receiving situation is not necessarily better because he's leaving DK Metcalf and Tyler right. Lockett, two very suitable uh, wide receivers there in Seattle. But there's still a lot of upside there with those wide receivers. And definitely Cortland Sutton. I mean, both these guys are big winners. Jerry Judy's going to fill the Tyler Lockett Absolutely. role. Cortland Sutton's going to fill that DK Metcalf role. And where DK Met where uh, Cortland Sutton really won was – was getting downfield and stretching that field. But he's had some really rough goes at quarterback with Drew Locke, Teddy Bridgewater, not been able to push it down the field. But that's what actually Russell Wilson does really, really well. I mean, he's able to just right. push that ball down the field for Cortland Sutton. So he went from being maybe a wide receiver three to a potential high-end wide receiver two where we saw him two years ago where we thought he was on the verge of being a potential wide receiver one year in, year out. So big news from the receiver aspects. And, of course – Everybody's talking about Albert O yep, now, absolutely. Um, who kind of ate a little bit out uh, Noah Fant's time there in Denver as it was the f former first round pick. Now, before I get your guys' opinion on all of this, I just want to say for me personally, like I'm using this Albert O news and I'm selling like I'm selling because right now that Albert O news is out of control. It like is. people are like, Dude, tight end one for sure, locked in. Somebody said, I just saw it on Twitter that they moved him up to hit their tight end 10 or something like that overall, which. Oh, that's fine. I mean, that's, that's, I mean, that's crazy in my eyes. I mean, I know he, he has flashed um, so, some potential, but I don't think he's a top 10 kind of, kind of candidate. I definitely moved him up my ranks. I, I think I got him in the teens now, like 16, 17, where he was down in like no man's land in, in the, the late 20s or something like that. Which is no this. different than being wide receiver 10. So it doesn't really matter. That's the whole point. There's no difference to being wide receiver 16. Well, there is. There's six spots. But you mean <laughs> tight end 16 tight end. or tight end 10? Tight end 16 or tight end 10. Like the, the point differential per game, we talk about this many times when it comes to tight ends. But. Right now, his name is hot. Definitely in tight end premium. You could probably get a really good pick or player for a guy like Albert O. And my concern isn't even Albert O in his skill set. He's a big, fast, talented tight end. But to be a dominant tight end, to be the guy at tight end and put up those top five, top six numbers, you have to be the guy in your offense. You have to be targeted heavily and do something with it. So with Javante Williams... Yeah, with mm -hmm. with potentially Melvin Gordon come back potentially, but even Shh, don't even, say that even without Melvin Gordon with Javante Williams, Jerry Judy, and Corlin Sutton, I don't think Albert O is just going to get the targets enough. Yeah, the, maybe he'll have enough to be tight end eight or tight end ten, but to to break that top six kind of that top right. six fill difference maker be right. a difference maker. I well, just don't see it, and I'm just kind of like riding that hype and trying going somewhere else I, with it. I'm with you because on top of that. Tell me the tight end that has been crazy successful with Russell Wilson. With Russell Wilson. That was going to be my point. Yeah. Yep. Like, there, you know, he's had stretches with players over like two or three games here and there that, you know, they've targeted quite a bit. But for the most part, it hasn't been – he hasn't been a guy that's thrown it to a ton. Now, could that be a faction of, of the offense or, or things like that? Sure. Maybe that will be slightly different here. But, uh, you know, Hackett came from an offense where tight end wasn't used a ton either. And, yeah, so I, I just don't – I just don't know where that – that volume is going to come from. I always thought he was a good player. And if you had him already, like congratulations, he just got a huge value bump, whether you keep him or trade him or whatever, he got a huge value bump, but I, I'm, I'm not buying him under any circumstances right now. But that's the thing. You could probably sell him. Like I'm interested to go in the trade finder, like tomorrow and the day after that and see, look at some Albert O trades, but the value is a huge bump to his value. And sometimes it's just about finding the right opportunity to get these guys to sell. It's 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 right. it's like it's like the stock market when it comes to dynasty. So right now, if I could flip Albert O O for Cole Komet, Dawson Ooh, yeah. Knox right now, 
Like those two guys specifically, like Cole Komet or Dawson Knox, they offer much a much higher ceiling from a fantasy output. That's that's the move that I'm making. Since since this player was in that range last week when we were talking about top ten guys, what about what about the player that was traded in this Noah Fant? Where who, who yeah. are you taking Noah Fant or or Alberto? Because I think a lot of people right now are like Alberto for sure. I mean, that's tough. Uh, Noah Fant's been kind of overrated. I've kind of mentioned it a couple times on the show in the past. Like I'm just not a big Noah Fant guy. But he's a guy that's always bordering right on that tight end one. But now he's going to a situation again. Tyler Lockett might get traded. There's still two stud receivers ahead of him, and we have no idea who the quarterback is. So, so you're you're leaning Alberto above Noah Fant in this. I would. I would. Yeah, I got. I mean. No, because I'd want uh, Albert O because I'd probably sell him for more right now. I'm just talking about like if which, you, which player oh, do you I like would take. One? I would take Noah Fant. Okay, thank you. That's what I was trying to yeah. get to the like what personally who do you value higher? Not like, I would what? I from a talent output out I'll, I'll, I'll still take Noah Fant. Okay, yeah. you know he's still, he's got a first round pedigree. He still had really good film. He's more of he's more of like a Mike Isicki. Um, and maybe this move could help him a little bit. You know, because same thing, the same, because here's the thing, the same reason that Cor- we, you know, everybody's sitting here talking about, oh, Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy are getting this big bump. They've been hindered. But now people want to poo-poo on Noah Fant. Well, listen, he's going to his third year, right, of, right. Uh, of in the NFL. We all know. Fourth, but, fourth year. Fourth year. Yep. We know the tight end takes time. He's been in a doo-doo situation with quarterbacks as well. So, like, mm-hmm. where's his benefit of the doubt? Like, what if they go in and they trade for Jimmy G? Or maybe they draft Malik Willis now or a good quarterback and, and they turn around. and they They're do, right there at nine, right? That's yep. Right at nine. Yep. And the best thing that can happen for Noah Fant is they do trade Tyler Lockett away. So now it's DK Metcalf and Noah Fant are the number one goes to. And we all know the young t- quarterbacks, like that safety valve, the seam runners, which are going to be the tight ends, which is Noah Fant. I would expect Noah Fant to outproduce Albert O almost year in and year out in almost any situation here going forward. Um, I, I, I think he's a much better talent. That's why I, I would go with the, the Noah Fant side of that as well. I, that's why I asked because I feel like everyone's poo-pooing Noah Fant and everyone's like bump, pumping up Albert O. So I just wanted to kind of see where you guys landed on that. And obviously for Russ, this is a great situation for him. He's got a really good defense. He's got a Super Bowl cal- yeah. caliber team. He's got a, a, a locked-in runner here too. I mean – does, does it actually eat. move the needle much for him though? Like maybe a quarterback spot? I think I think but I think he could potentially be in an offense that's more pass happy, don't you think? Could. I mean definitely could be, but uh compared compared to Pete Carroll's that very for sure. very run heavy. Um for sure. Uh, but I mean, you you do still have Javante Williams and potentially sure. Melvin Gordon as well. So yep. look one at you, look at you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you dare! I know. I, but you could have Melvin could. <laughs> hypothetically. Who, who I only when it proves my point, Matt. I know. When it's against know. my point. Uh, <laughs> All right, here's a question for you guys. I'll give you. So now that the news changed, I'm gonna give you Russell Wilson in Dynasty Superflex. Would you rather have Russell Wilson or Trevor Lawrence? Wilson. I wanted him before, though, still, too. Oh, there's so much more time with that young buck. Yeah, I would take Trevor Lawrence. I think Trevor Lawrence, but it's, it's I think, closer than it was. Russ is what, 31, 32? Oh, 33? I'll, uh, I'll look. He's older than Matt Stafford. Is he? Yeah. So, okay, speaking of that, a freshly traded quarterback that just won a Super Bowl, who would you rather have in Superflex, Matt Stafford or Russell Wilson? Russell Wilson. But I, once again, I had him above before. Okay. I had him above uh, a lot of these guys. So. Sad Stafford ahead of him before because I, I like Stafford's offense. It's the throw first offense with all those weapons. They're going to bring Odell back as well. So I think I like Stafford more just because I think they're going to throw the football more there. Russell Wilson is 33 years old in 99 days. Okay. So going to be 34. So you probably got a good solid more four more years. So that's in super flex. You got to take that into account as well. Sure. Um, who would you rather have, Matt Stafford or Russell Wilson? Probably pretty close. I would take Stafford again just because I think they throw the football more. There yeah, we know LA. that that that's a pass happy pass first. We're not sure exactly what we're going to get out of Hackett here in in Denver, so I'm going to say uh, yeah, it's still Stafford in that in that instance. Now in my rankings, I have this quarterback. I probably got to move him in Superflex now that this news is broke. Um, Justin Fields or Russell Wilson? It's close, but I still I still have Wilson. Wilson. I had him above Lance. I have him above uh, Rodgers. You have, have him above Rodgers? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. I mean, he has a chance to eat here. I mean, 
things go big time here. Yeah. For him. Definitely if Javante gets involved in the passing game inside the 10, they could do some screens or in the flats there for him. I mean, I Russ think, can have 50 touchdowns. I think Wilson with Cortland Sutton is a really underrated, nice fit right now. Sure. I mean, Cortland Sutton last year was, I think, third in the league in air yards per attempt. Um, and that just fits perfectly with what, what Russell Wilson wants to do. He was this guy that, I mean, he like leads the league in all sorts of passing categories for distance. I mean, that's, mm-hmm. that's what he is known for. That's what he's good for. Obviously, Cortland Sutton and DK Metcalf, much different physically, but I think they want to do a lot of the same stuff, get downfield, kind of win over the top of people. I think I think, I think Sutton can help Wilson win even more with the way he dominates the sideline, right? Like his body sure. control, the way he can own that sideline. Contested line. catch Contested stuff. Contested catch stuff. I mean, DK Metcalf would take the lid off, you know, the top off the defenses, using his speed to get downfield where – Russ just needs to throw it up to Cortland Sutton. He's going to get come down with it. You know, and then you have the underneath Jerry Judy with just a stout um, route technician out there. He, as long as he can find that separation, should eat as well. So, yeah, I mean, I'm probably a little bit too low on Russell Wilson. But at the same time, I want to see it all come together. Like, I'll move I'll move Russell Wilson up as I see fit as he plays. And to be fair, like, I've always been lower on Russell Wilson than everybody else. It's just He's just one of those players that I've just rubs me the wrong way. Oh, really? It just, I don't know. I don't know what it is. He, I always rank him a little bit lower than everybody else because I just never want. I've never owned a Russell Wilson share. Oh, really? In all my yeah. dynasty years or leagues, I've never owned him. It's just I don't know what it is about Russell Wilson in his gameplay. It's been fantastic, but I want. I just don't own him. Sorry, right. owns the wrong word to use. I've never uh, had, had him on your team. Had, had him on my team. Yep. Yeah. So, what would you pay for Russell Wilson? So obviously, Aaron Rodgers right now in Superflex is still gonna. It's still gonna cost you two first, right? Mm-hmm. Like. Russell Wilson moves his team. Somebody's somebody's excited. Their team is in rebuild mode because their team has been bad. Hey, Russell Wilson's on the block. Now that we know he's in Denver, we 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 talked about his skill set players here, which are arguably some of the best in the league right now. Mm-hmm. What are you giving up for Russell Wilson, Matt? In a in a super flex league, are you giving up three first for Russell Wilson? I was gonna say two is definitely not even gonna get. I don't think be close to getting it done. Um, Depends on the league. I think we still value Superflex a little bit higher than the general consensus. Yeah. So I, while I don't think it will happen most places, I think that's actually closer than you think. Okay. Um, I was going to say, you know, if you're in win now mode, then I would, I would be okay giving three. Cause he's like we said, he's 33 years old. I mean, that's, that's a ton of time um, in order to kind of, get some juice out of that and then even go back and trade and, and kind of pull back some of that, sure. you know, get, you know, maybe get two first three years down the, the line uh, with, with a guy that's only 33 years old. So um, I think, I, I think I would do that. I think I would go three, but that I wouldn't go any higher than that. Okay. I don't know that I can quite cross the three threshold. I, that's kind of reserved for like those top five quarterbacks for me. Like two in Jimmy G. Yeah, yeah, so something like lines. that, or like if they there was a position player they liked, like uh, you know Amon Ross St. Brown, or you know somebody like that that's got some upside but isn't Your boy? established. I love Amon Ross, I do. Uh, hey, you know, but quarterbacks rule. Yeah, and a flip side here in Seattle, like I think this increases the odd that Rashad Penny is coming back, most likely. Huh? You don't think so? That's a that's a negative hunt. That's a who that's a sigh too. I got a hunt a sigh. I don't know. Like I, I truly don't know. Huh? There there was a report that came out sigh. today that they're not going to get into a bidding war right. for Rashad Penny. Oh, neither is anybody else. So <laughs> they just released Bobby Wagner while we were doing the show. They released oh. the vet Bobby Wagner, the heart and soul of oh, that defense. They're breaking this thing yeah, down. They're burning yeah. it down. So that's they're the thing, like sign, they're not gonna if, sign a running if, back. If they right can now. get well, it's Pete Carroll. So, <laughs> you know, if they can get the running back on, on the decently cheap, like yeah, maybe. They got Chris Carson for that. Potentially, yeah, if he Coming can play that, ever again. That neck issue. <laughs> yeah, so we'll, we'll see what happens there. But, yeah, I think they're tearing this thing down to the studs. The only piece I could see maybe still being there would be DK Metcalf because he's so young. But they might also look on the flip side and say, we could get quite a bit for DK Metcalf. It's and. DK- 23 or 24 like he's he i think he's young. 24 he was young when he came in because this will be his he's going to be going into his fourth year yeah like Pretty how sure do you not try and sell year. like get a, like a fourth or a third for locket right like a fourth or third and then try and get like a high second for like metcalf and just like you well, might even be able to get more than that you might be able to get a first from yeah metcalf. i guess you do need to move i guess you need some players to pay your to come yeah people come watch. Yeah, have people come and yeah. be in the stands so i mean unfortunately for dk metcalf i mean this hurts his dynasty value this is a big blow to his dynasty value. That's I think he's the biggest loser in this whole thing, right? 
Yeah, I mean, Russ's arm getting it downfield to him. I mean, that's it, – it's. I think when we, we said we were down on DK and we had him down at the 112 range during the rookie uh, ranking show when he came out was – I think we, we came back and looked at it as like, I think where we missed on here is we underestimated Russell Wilson and his arm sure. um, just to put DK in some really good positions, and, and he did. So he's definitely, without knowing who his quarterback is, I mean, if Jimmy Garoppolo is DK Metcalf's quarterback, I mean, are you guys like going from 6 to midnight? No, you're, I'm you're staying, uh, you're I'm staying even, out cold naked. I'm very, I'm whelmed with him. <laughs> I'm underwhelmed if like Drew Locke ends up being like the fallback plan. Like that's underwhelming. Well, at yeah. least Drew Locke could chuck it down the field and hope for the best. Oh, he's terrible. Give oh, he is break, terrible. Man. He's pretty he bad. Is. He's pretty bad. Yeah, it's 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 rough. And we even talked two weeks ago, or was that last week when we were going through our wide receiver ones for all of us? None of us had DK Metcalf inside of our wide receiver one, and that was part of the equation for us. Sure. We were talking about before on you know one of the cell shows. We don't know what's happening with Russ. That is a big part of the equation with him. If we knew exactly what was happening with them, you might sneak into our top 10s, top 12s. But without that news, we, we just can't do it. And then sure enough, this news broke. And, and it honestly even surprised me. I thought if there was somebody that was going to leave, it was going to be Rodgers, not Wilson. So that that was definitely surprising. But that's why you kind of hedge your bets with some of those players, especially ones that are directly tied to those superstars. It, it does make it tough. So you're looking more now at you know, mid to low end wide receiver two for fantasy more than likely. And and that might even be generous. I, I moved him down to wide receiver 24. Okay. So right at the end of wide receiver. So two I range. see it exactly how you see it. Yeah. So right now you own, you have DK Metcalf on your team. Okay. Right. Somebody comes to you right away. Hey, I'm looking at this by window. They offer you a 23 first. They're a middle of the road team. They're, they have one six this year. Do you take the 23 first straight up for DK Metcalf? I think I do. I think I do. I think I can do better. I honestly do. With with any random first. I think I could find a better person. This is this is this is really, really difficult because do you squeeze a second out of them? <laughs> if I can, absolutely. Yeah, I mean you try for sure. Absolutely. I'm not smash accepting a first, but I think if if that was the only thing I could get. I think I would. It's it's tough because on, on the one side, all of the things that we said negatively, but on, on the plus side, he is still a young receiver that has a proven track record of yeah. success in the NFL. And so to just say, like, I'm going to ship him off for random first is tough. But I think because of how highly I value that class, and you said it looks like it's going to probably be a mid, I, th- I, I think if a push came to shove, I would do it. Yeah, but you're going to try and get like one six. For and two sure. Six I'm definitely pushing to get more things. 